Go ahead. My name is Edgar Cole. I was born in Clarkstorp in the Western Transvaal and we lived on a farm where my dad had a, was a partner in a farm store surrounded mainly by Afrikaans farmers. I went to an Afrikaans junior school. What date were you born? Sorry. 1923. And uh, we used to go to school mostly barefoot and uh, the school was about half a mile from where we lived. And uh, I had lots of friends and I could speak Afrikaans I think before I could speak English. Anyway, uh, after school I went to high school at Poch Boys High in Poch of Strom. And uh, unfortunately I was unable to attend university because my father passed away in my last year at, in, in, in my matric. And uh, my uncle who lived in Salisbury was in Johannesburg at the time and he said, why don't you come and work for me in, in Salisbury, which I did. And I was with the same firm, Radio Limited, for over 50 years. And uh, one of the first people I met when I went to Salisbury was Nick Aladef, and we've been friends for over 70 years since then. Um, we had quite a lot of fun in those days. In our in the, in the barracks that I, we shared with Nick, there was a chap called Benny Krog, and he took it upon himself to name the, the only two Jews in the barrack room were Nick and myself, and he called us King Zog number one and King Zog number two. <laughs> and that st stuck around for a long while. In fact, we formed a royal court with two kings, a king and a co-king, we had a padre who was Joe Mandy. We had a minister of defence who was Derek Friend. And uh, we had a court jester who was Alfie Aladef, Nick's cousin. And uh, we had uh, a lot of fun and uh, we had these meetings of the court. Uh, Sylvia Mandy was the lady in waiting. She was pregnant at the time. <laughs> and. Uh, <coughs> What else can I tell you about those days? Uh, as I say, we, I, I was with Radio Limited for all those years. I was a keen bowler, played bowls at the Wingate Bowling Club for many years and was actually chairman of the bowl section for a while. Can you tell us a bit about the, the setting up of the Wingate Sports Club? Well, that... I think one of the prime movers was Saul Adwin, whom you probably know or remember, he was one of the prime movers of the Wingate uh, Club. And uh, they managed to raise quite a bit of money to form the club and they started a golf section. And the golf course was pretty wild at that stage. It took quite a long time to develop it. And fortunately, Dr. Joe Richkin, who was a friend of ours, was very interested in, in trees. He knew about, a lot about trees and he advised them on what trees to plant at various places in the golf course. And eventually it became quite a, a very good golf course and they had many tournaments there. And also they started a tennis and bowl section and uh, that was quite successful. He also, they also had a swimming pool, believe it or not, and the kids used to go out there on weekends to swim. Um, what else can I tell Edgar, you? There was a story I heard that the, the, the Jewish uh, sports club was set up because people, Jews were blackballed from it's other clubs. Is that true. right? I think that is true. Absolutely. I think it was true. In all the way it was true. Yeah. And uh, I think besides Saul Adwin, I don't know who else was prime mover there. Stanley Jones, I believe. Stanley Jones and I think Ralph Erdstein, if I'm not mistaken. And they uh, acquired this bit of land about five miles from the city and uh, that became the Wingate Club. And it was very successful and uh, eventually had a very big golf membership and bowls membership. I think there were about 120 bowlers and several hundred golfers. And I think the golf course is still going today. Um, and uh, I think 
uh, Nick, one of your relations, played golf there quite recently and we had some pictures of it. Um, there were, used to be the Maccabi Games, there used to be once a year, they used to have a... I remember the people come yeah, up from Bulawayo. that's right, and we had... Uh, uh, they used to alter, alternate with Bulawayo and have... Uh, mainly golfers used to come and bowlers. And that was a, 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 an ongoing thing in alternate uh, cities, Bulawayo and, and Salisbury. Um, what else could I Were tell you involved you? in the shul at all? Yes, well, I was a member of the congregation, you know, <coughs> for over 50 years or more. And uh, I remember when they started the, and they built the new uh, hall, which became the, uh, the, the, became the shul eventually because of a large congregation couldn't fit into the old shul in Salisbury Street. And uh, that hall is still going, and I think it was sold not long ago to some church, I think. Mm. Uh, I stayed with the Robinson family in, in Harare for many years, and uh, my brother came up to, to Salisbury, and, and uh, he was married then. And he said his sister-in-law wasn't a bad-looking dame, and he, would I like to meet her? And I said yes, and this is the result. <laughs> and uh, I think that's about all I can tell you. Um, Your family? My mother was born in New York, and uh, the family lived there for a couple of years, and then returned to Poland where they originated from and eventually moved to Rhodesia. Uh, my grandfather, Sam Robinson, was a commercial traveller, I think for the firm called Frankel. Oh my goodness. In, uh, in Salisbury, and uh, he had... Uh, my father was a Freemason and went up to Rhodesia then on some Freemason business where he met my mother, and they became married, uh, they got married around about 1920, I think, or 1919. And uh, that's about all I can tell you, I think. Uh, and when did you come to Israel? We came to Israel nine years ago. Was it nine? 2005. 2005. We, and we stayed in Netanya very happily for a number of years until we came to live in Metrotia at the beginning of this year. And we've been very happy in Israel, and uh, we still are. <laughs> uh, what else can I tell you? 